Oh my goodness. And there it is. Wow, get the pin to go. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Bull TV for the PWBA Summer Classic Series taking place at the International Training and Research Center in Arlington, Texas. My name is Aaron Smith with Bull TV, and we are thrilled to be bringing you the stepladder finals of the PWBA Go Bowling Classic, the first event, the first of three national tour events here at the summer kickoff, our Summer Classic Series. Uh, we have four great competitors who have Fought their way through this 43-foot condition that has certainly proved tricky uh, throughout the course of competition. But Dasha Kovalova has found a way. Uh, she ended up leading this tournament, folks, by uh, by a sizable margin. She uh, put everything together, plus 585 with bonus pins included, uh, leading the field by nearly 200. Uh, but she's going to have a tough road uh, to win her third title this season. Our first matchup today, Birgit Norreich is going to be taking on Verdi Crawley. The winner taking on Jordan Richard in the step uh, or in the semifinals leading up to that matchup with Dasha. But uh, before we get out to the lanes, our competitors are warming up at the ITRC right now. I am very, very excited to be bringing in our uh, special guest joining us here, Hall of Famer, Kelly Kulik. Hey, Aaron. Thanks for having me. Very excited to be here tonight to really commentate the show for the kickoff of this first event, the Go Bowling Classic Series, for the summer series here, as you said, the International Training Research Center. Um, some familiar faces that we've seen all year long. Every woman that's been here tonight is, has been on a show already this year. They're going to have a chance for multiple winners again. Um, and even Birgit might be looking for a first title for this season. So very excited to see what's going to, how to play out in this upcoming telecast. Uh, I think that's a great point. All of these players uh, have had this experience so far this year. Uh, you know, Verity's uh, made a couple of stepladder finals. This is her fourth one of the season. They got that first win in Nashville uh, just a couple of months back. Uh, Birgit's making her third show uh, for Jordan, her second, and then Dasha leading the tour with five. And three of those have come at the ITRC now. She made two at the kickoff classic series back in January. She's continuing that hot hand at the ITRC and uh, put on a performance to take over the lead uh, and never let it go. Ran away from everybody after she got to that top spot. Uh, it was impressive to watch. Uh, what is it about Dasha's game that has come together over the course of these you know, past two seasons that have allowed her to uh, make the leap to become one of the best players uh, in the world? Well, just off the top of my head, Aaron, I mean, if going back to this season so far, when she won in Minnesota, it was a long pattern, roughly around the same distance, 44 feet. When she won in Louisville, again, it was another long pattern. And then same thing, kicking off here, again, a 43-foot pattern. And what it allows her to do, what Stasha is so great, and I'm, I was going to give her a very, very important compliment here, but she's this generation's Liz Johnson. I think she has a little trick up her sleeve with her rotation off her hand. The ball never sees the front part of the lane, and she's able to create such good launch angles through the front part with the ball being released close to her ankle and really controlling, controlling the directness to the break point. And she never loses sight of the 1-3 pocket, so she's constantly in control. She's building all the success from the previous season in 19 when she had some great success there. The offseason gave her plenty of time to practice in the Grand Rapids area where she's living right now and has a great job, so she's able to coexist and do both. And her confidence is high. Not underestimating, though, even at the break, she made a pitch change in her thumb. Mm -hmm. So uh, she was like, oh, I know that's wrong. I said, no, Dasha. I said, it's never wrong. I said, one thing a bowler should not do is bowl in pain. And she was trying to eliminate some, some squeezing and some pain along the way. So, again, a 43-foot pattern. Her mom is here in the building with her. It gives her some comfort. And um, she's had great support from from her Brunswick staff and the ball reps all along the season, really behind in her corner. She is looking for her third title of the 2021 season. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, the win in Twin Cities, of course, defending Louisville, now looking for this win here at the Go Bowling Classic. She's one win away, uh, but she's going to have to wait a little bit till we get to see Dasha out on the TV pair. Uh, Earning the number two seed, actually getting there in the final game of the position round, uh, Jordan Richard, who, uh, you know, really relied on collecting victories throughout the course of uh, match play to put herself in this position. She actually had the same record as Dasha when it was all said and done. Uh, let's verify that. Uh, Ten and two. 
Yeah. Very tough to uh, win 10 games uh, out of 12 against a field this talented. Uh, so Jordan, you know, taking advantage of those, uh, but obviously the bonus pins go away here. Head to head matchup. Uh, she has a second place finish so far this year at the BVL Open. Uh, but what is it about Jordan's game that really uh, has impressed you uh, throughout the course of her young career? Jordan is very powerful. She has a lot of stamina behind her. She creates a lot of leverage with her arm swing. And what she does really well is, is she's able to throw the ball hard. Now, with this format being uh, explained, the women bowled nine games for qualifying. So, hence, the, the length being 40 through 3 and a higher volume, roughly, I believe, around 27 milliliters, nine games format four people per pair. So that's 36 games on one lane. You think about over time and what Jordan's able to do is she's over allows herself to overpower the front part of the lane, which burns up really quick because the women tend to use a lot more surface than the men do. And she's again, all the women on the show tonight, keep their angles right in front of them. They're more direct from the front to the back portion of the lane. And the ball doesn't have to have a lot of motion, but Jordan and Verity both have the highest rev rate of the four women on this pair tonight. And the higher rev rate usually allows you a little bit more miss room to the outside with more recovery. All right, we're going to go to the lanes as uh, the players do warm up and get ready here on 9 and 10 at the ITRC. Uh, so we see the action getting underway. Once again, we're uh, probably about 10 minutes away now from getting underway. Uh, so for the folks watching right now on Facebook and YouTube, we certainly appreciate you joining us here for this uh, pregame show before we kick off here at the Go Bowling Classic. But you will have to head over to BowlTV.com to uh, – to watch the Stepladder Finals live, and of course, the opportunity to win on Bowl TV. Uh, we're giving away three bowling balls throughout the course of this Stepladder Finals, so uh, the only way you can win is uh, become a Bowl TV subscriber. Check it out. Uh, a few different price points to come at as well, so if you want to watch the whole Summer Classic, you can a few different ways, uh, so we encourage you to head over to BowlTV.com in just a couple of minutes, uh, pick up that subscription, and uh, watch the best bowlers in the world compete out here on the PWBA Tour. Now, Kelly, we have uh, we have our opening match. We have Birgit Norreichs taking on Verdi Crawley. Uh, Birgit has been bowling really well this year. This is her third show. And, uh, you know, she had some ups and downs throughout the course of these blocks. And, uh, you know, looking back to match play earlier today, she started the day in second, fell to eighth, worked her way back to second. It's kind of been up and down, but did what she needed to do. Uh, she's still looking for her first individual title. She won a doubles title at the Lucy. Uh, Birgit has one of the top players from the overseas, from the European market, from coming over from Germany. Uh, just talk about what makes her game so unique and uh, why she should, why she could have a chance to run the ladder here and win this title. Well, Birgit, I've watched her bowl for many years now, and you know, three out of the four women are international players. They have all that experience competing on sport patterns for world events as well. So Birgit definitely has the resume as well as the experience to succeed out here. Uh, she's another one. She's a little bit late timing. She really uses a lot of her upper body strength to power the ball down the lane. And that's what she's so good at repeating. Again, if you watch these women as they go along, they're not going to be your, your Dari or someone that's going to curve the lane. Even Verity being a higher rev rate, they're all going to keep it in front of them. And this pattern over the course of qualifying as well as in match play played very, very diff different from lane to lane round to round you'll see the women right now in the warm-up they're playing straighter and typically on a 43 foot pattern you want to play closer to the head pin we had to do that in qualifying but once lesser players got on the approaches and didn't remove as much oil therefore their angles again were tighter through the front so birgit again all these women's strengths are just straight arm swing from front to back you're not going to see them give away the pocket too too much i think the only fault they might have is accelerating at the bottom of the swing that might just cause that that two four ten or washout look occasionally throughout the day uh unfortunately we saw a lot of two tens this week uh so hopefully we got all those out of the way uh prior to the step ladder finals here uh, our last player to make the step ladder here, Verity Crawley, uh, who's been on quite an amazing run since, uh, uh, you know, at, during the kickoff classic series, uh, we weren't sure if she was going to be here competing. Uh, and, you know, with some travel issues and everything, the visa, uh, she wasn't here. She came back and she has been uh, been a force out on the PWBA tour since returning uh, in April, winning that first title. Uh, just talk about, you know, the uh, that feeling of getting that first title and just how that kind of just uh, takes you know a little bit of the pressure off knowing that uh, she had been close before, four runner-up finishes uh, to finally break through and make it happen. 
Yeah, as you said, Aaron, she was on the cusp the entire time, especially she rooms with Diana Zavialova as well as Daria Payok, and they are already were in the winner's circle. So she was watching her roommates have a lot of success. But I think just like we've talked about it before, the break did her very, very well, gave her some time to visually practice and mentally using visualization. And then in her off time, when she was able to get back here, she went back to her college roots down at Florida and Weber University, where she had access to another great facility and practiced a lot with, with John Janowitz, JJ, who does the lanes. Um, her, her, her spouse, her boyfriend is a, is a lane maintenance man for a Kegel and stuff. She's able to bowl in a variety of patterns. And what I love about Verity's game is, I mean, she never falters. She posts every single shot. All the women on the show post a shot. But her classic swing from front to back and her tempo with her feet, she really gets the ball in the swing very, very quickly. Great rhythm, great leverage at the foul line, good knee bend, and just solid. So I would say even at her young age of being in the mid-20s, I think she's hitting her prime right now. Uh, looking to be a force on tour here for a long time. Uh, I believe we're just a couple minutes away now. We're getting closer and closer to the stepladder finals, getting underway, folks, here for the Go Bowling Classic. Once again, I uh, got to head over to BowlTV.com. Uh, we see plenty of you there in the chat already, so a big hello uh, to all the Bowl TV supporters. We've uh, been enjoying bringing the PWBA tour to you all season. Of course, all week here at the ITRC, uh, the International Bowling Campus Classic starts up uh, tomorrow. We're right back at it, Kelly, uh, and you'll be out on the lanes once again. Uh, I, I know you made a great run that final game here on this 43-foot condition, uh, fell a little bit short of the top 12, uh, but what are you looking forward to for uh, this upcoming event uh, in hopes for some extended play as well at the Bowl TV Classic uh, Monday and Tuesday? That answer is very easy, Aaron. Friction and hook. Friction and hook. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna. The ladies will be bowling on a 38-foot pattern, so only 22 feet left to go, which is a long distance. There's gonna be a max amount of friction out there. So for me, my comfort zone obviously is always going more left to right. I think the tricky part is just being straighter through the front the first two games, being patient, and hoping I have the right equipment along the way, just to, as I get steeper through the front to to carry and trip out the 10 in this building. All right, that will be starting up tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern time, 10 local here in DFW. So uh, once again, the, the lineup here today as we uh, get our final few shots in. Verity's going to be taking on Birgit in the opening round. Verity looking for her second title of the season. Birgit looking for her second career title after winning the Lucy with Jason Sterner in 2017. The winner of that matchup is going to face the 2018 Rookie of the Year, Jordan Richard. Two-time champion. She's won each of her two years on tour so far. Uh, looking to make it three for three. Can she do it? Can she make it to the finals where Dasha Kovalova is awaiting? Uh, going back to Louisville, she kind of ran away with that one, was the top seed. Uh, similar fashion here. Got ahead, kind of ran away from the field. Top seed. Can she make it happen once again? Become the first player this season to win three titles. She's the first to make five championship round appearances. Uh, but can she become the first to win three and uh, move even closer in that player of the year race uh, that is tightening up between her and Julia Bond. Julia had a great performance, just missed the show, finishing in fifth place. Uh, and it came down literally to the final shot. Valerie Bersier, uh solidifying that victory to uh, not allow Julia to get the bonus pins to get ahead of Verity. But a fifth place finish, another great showing uh, for Julia, who's, uh, whose leap as well to the next level has been uh, been very fun to watch this season. All right, folks, just uh, just minutes away here. Final few shots. Kelly, talk a little bit about just kind of the, the lane play you're seeing here. Uh, once again, you mentioned, uh, you, you know, angles were a little more open and qualifying players kind of started moving a little bit tighter here. And it looks like, you know, nothing too crazy as far as angles, but uh, kind of how do you see the progression of this pattern playing just kind of based off of, uh, where Birgit and Verdi are trying to break them down at right now. The, the two ladies right now are really trying to create a lot of friction around the 10 board. Um, what they, what I saw in match play was something different, though, where typically the women would move left. They did for a little while, but then they got so ugly, they actually had to get back to the right using weaker stuff, a little lane shine or even some 2,000, 3,000 Avalon pads on top of it to get the ball through the front part of the lane. So that's why they had to stay on top of it and stay straighter through the front now that they built up the friction which all four women did it they started around 8 9 10 11 you're going to see the women now start to move in 12 13 the hash marker at 40 feet 40 to 43 feet is going to be the key some of the higher rev rate heavy handed women were able to get the ball back from seven and eight other women that were more straight through the front kept around 9 10 11 
Um, and then as they got steeper, a 12. But I don't think we're going to see that. I think if they keep it right around the, the 10 board or that second tracer, that's going to be the key to controlling the ball reaction. Then from there, really, it was about how the ball is going through the pins. I, all these women have enough rev rate, enough tilt to get the ball to skid and then continue in the back. I said it based on watching the first round of scores. Nine was a really good frame for this pattern. It really was. Uh, at one point, Jason Thomas said in game three, there was nobody going to shoot 200. That's how, how crazy they got. So we might see something that typically doesn't happen where the women move back to the right. You always try to chase it left and get closer to the head pin, but you really could see a lot of different ball changes and trying to stay closer to that, that 12, 13 zone for a longer period of time. All right, folks, we are getting ready uh, less than two minutes away from starting time here. Final few practice shots uh, before the kickoff of this first match. Verdi Crawley taking on Beer Get Nor Rikes. Uh, so, folks, we're going to take a quick second to reset. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook and YouTube, uh, this is uh, your final warning. you got to head over to BowlTV.com to watch the stepladder finals at the Go Bowling Classic to see who wins the title here from the Summer Classic Series. Uh, so for Kelly Kulik, I'm Aaron Smith. We're going to take a just a very, very short break. If you're on Bull TV, everybody hang tight. We'll be right back. But uh, when we do, when we're back, it's Step Ladder Finals time, folks. So thank you again for joining us here for the pregame show. We'll be back for the Step Ladder Finals in just a second. And remember, folks, on Bull TV, Bowling Losing. <laughs> 